want to talk about incorporating technology into the classroom. It's something that has fascinated me since I started playing around with technology. I always wanted my classes when I was young to have technology in them, and I would push for that. I would push my, my parents to let me play games. I tried to say that they were educational. I can't say it worked out too well. Uh, I learned not to delete my dad's characters in his game. That led to a bit of an issue. But the other thing is, I'm a technology addict. My name is John, and I'm recovering. I'm also a critic, I'm also a writer, and I'm a teacher. And what happens sometimes is all of those meld together, and sometimes they separate when they shouldn't. So a colleague of mine and I decided to create an augmented reality app for Shakespeare, because students find Hamlet to be a bit dense. They tend to not read it. I try and argue with them that a video game has as much density in context as Hamlet does and vice versa. Sometimes that works and sometimes my message doesn't get through. So I try and find a way to bridge that miscommunication, so to speak, or lack of communication. What we decided to do was take a look at Hamlet and figure what the biggest stumbling block was. That stumbling block seemed, in our experience, to be the historical context. How can you read Hamlet without knowing what's going on, the cultural aspects of it? Students see this when they think of Shakespeare. They think of a, a thick book, a lot of reading, a lot of language that they don't understand. They miss the fact that Hamlet is a lot like them, that he suffers from things that they suffer from. This is what they think. They think nobody can actually read this stuff and get it, so why bother? I always tell my students, if I create an impossible task for you, for your paper, are you going to do it? Most likely not. So the same thing is what we saw in, in Hamlet. So we searched out technologies that would work. And this is the other thing, the dense historical context. In order to find out what's going on in Hamlet, you need to understand all these things. So how can we take this and bring it to the students in a way that will get through the barrier? And the barrier is, of course, fear. And the barrier is just a lack of desire to, to do this. So we sought out uh, different technologies. One of those technologies was VR. And that was our, sort of our first foray into it. We were going to let students be in the Globe Theater in VR and experience it. And through that, we would impart these historical and cultural contexts. Not exactly. That's not going to work, only because we know the context. And again, I decided to start coding this myself just for a prototype. And, st and I realized I was becoming sort of enthralled with the technology. I was seduced by VR and AR. And how awesome it is. And I forgot that as a video game journalist, I criticized games for just using graphics and nothing else. And yes, yeah, so you can show students movie clips and you can show them other technologies. We thought about incorporating them into our app and students would learn, but learning doesn't happen that way. Much like the coders and the people here that understand machine learning and how it happens, it, you don't just impart it. You, you have to work at it, and you have to understand what are the outcomes that you want. You can't code something before you know what you want it to do. So we had to put ourselves in the mindset of our students. So VR was a good idea at first, I thought. I decided to code it a little bit, work on it, and then I got scared when I realized that VR can be dangerous in the classroom. I was demoing a VR game, and this happened. She's fine, don't worry. So VR was a distraction, and the idea is to not have the technology distract. It's not about how good we can make something and how flashy we can make it. It's how students can learn from it. So here is my first AR prototype. A student would take their phone, put it on the, you know, project on the ground here. This, what I thought at the time, awesome display of all the historical context of Hamlet. And I was impressed with my, impressed with my ability to code this. I, I, did a lot of this from scratch. The fact that I could actually get the camera to move, I was impressed, so I started doing more and more of this, getting further and further away from the learning outcome, getting further and further away from the critic that I was and the writer that I am, wanting to put myself in the place of the end user. And that's where I started to realize, I don't need to make this for me. I don't need to prove that I can do this. I shouldn't do it just because I can. I should do it because it works. So after getting student feedback and going back to the drawing board and, and trying to take a look at a way that a student might appreciate this, we realized the best thing to do is to create a 3D game with some AR elements. Tone down all this flashy technology. Students do not like the fact that it wastes their battery, very protective of their battery. 
they don't like things that are boring, and people that tested out the first prototype I showed you got bored. So we came up with a 3D game, and what you'll see here is a prototype of that 3D game, and we're gonna take into account the student experience, how they'll navigate through, what they'll do when they're in the game. It's not just about seeing what happens with Hamlet, it's what are you going to do and what are you going to walk away with? And what we want them to walk away with is a context of why the characters act the way they do. Sounds a little loud. Thank you. So through feedback and through bringing myself back to both a consumer of technology and a critic of technology, I realized that it's not about the substance it's, or the flash, it's about the content and the deliverability of that content more than anything else. I did a quick search for lightning talks and they said don't worry about the content, worry about the deliverability. And I would say it's the same thing. What I want people to walk away from this knowing is, yes, we have flashy technology, and yes, it gets attention, and yes, I can immerse my students, but what will they walk away with afterwards? And the answer that I'm seeking is knowledge that'll get them into the text and read. So don't let this distract from reading, let it enhance the reading.